Hello guys, this is Dr. Anil Mahajan from Inspiring Minds. I hope you are using this quarantine time primarily on your studies. So today we are going to talk about the topic on the pancreas, which is basically about most prevalent. It is you know the incidence rate is very high, the prevalence rate is very high uh, about the pancreatitis, and we will focus today more on the acute pancreatitis. Then we will in the next section we will. Talk about the chronic pancreatitis, and after that we will try to solve the clinical case scenario, and you will understand the topic. So, guys, just for an overview, I would like to tell you that just suppose this is our pancreas, and just suppose here we have our gallbladder. Okay, the pancreas and the gallbladder both are secreting their secretions, right? From the gallbladder, the bile is coming, and from the pancreas, the pancreatic juice is coming, and they both get open into the duodenum. From the pancreas, it is the pancreatic duct, pancreatic duct, and it is the common bile duct. From the gallbladder, we are getting the bile. And from the pancreas, we are getting the pancreatic juices secretions, and they are getting opened into the uh, duodenum at the level of uh, ampulla of water for the digestion and absorption uh, of the food and uh, substances. So this is the basic idea about the pancreas. Pancreas basically uh, has both the exocrine and as well as endocrine function. Exocrine as well as endocrine functions. It is only organ, basically, which is doing both exocrine as well as the endocrine function. Exocrine functions in the form of digestive juices, digestive juices, juices and bicarbonates, bicarbonate, and endocrine function in the form of hormones. Hormones. We know we have our insulin, glucagon, somatostatin, peptide. These are all. Uh, these are also. Covering up the endocrine function of the pancreas. Now let us just focus. What is about acute pancreatitis basically first? Okay, so friends, whenever any uh, injury, when any acute injury to the pancreas, it, it always manifests as the pancreatitis. Okay, any stress to the pancreas always manifests as the pancreatitis. It will lead to the inflammation of the pancreatitis. All this. So, so pancreatitis as the name suggests it is sudden inflammation of the pancreas, and the, in the pancreatitis we have acute form and the chronic form. Acute form and chronic form. Acute form is much more common than the chronic form. So the inflammation of the pancreas it is basically sudden and acute. Acute form is most common form of the pancreatitis. So what can be the causes that our pancreas, the gland which is doing both the exocrine and endocrine functions, is getting inflamed? The most common cause, the most common cause is the gallstones, gallstones, gallbladder stones. See, I made this like this is our pancreas. This is the gallbladder from where we getting the blood. If here somewhere the gallstone is there, this gallstone is there, then the stasis would be occurred over over this duct. And the hormones which are being secreted by the pancreas, the stasis of the hormones will be there. So the most common cause of the acute pancreatitis is gallstones. The second most common cause being it is alcohol. The persons who are you know taking uh, uh, binge drinking, who are doing the binge drinking, this is the second most common cause of the pancreatitis. Uh, pancreatitis is acute pancreatitis is alcohol. But the alcohol is the most common cause for alcohol. It's the most common cause. Cause for chronic pancreatitis. Chronic pancreatitis. Titus. About the alcohol, we will study in various types of cancers because alcohol is, you know, brings a lot of things in our body that it can lead to various diseases, liver cirrhosis, you know, uh, this pancreatitis. A lot, a lot many uh, things which has been done by the alcohol to our body. So the most common cause of pancre- acute pancreatitis is gallstones. Second most common is alcohol. Then we have another cause, which is iatrogenic. Iatrogenic cause, like one of the procedure uh, to view uh, view the ducts of the 
body like the biliary ducts the doctor has to see the biliary ducts and doctor performs the ERCP procedure ERCP procedure while performing the procedure the suddenly or you know by mistakenly accidentally unfortunately that ERCP causes any of the damage to the duct or the uh, pancreatic injury it can cause the pancreatitis so the iatrogenic causes ERCP while performing the ERCP by the doctor the another cause which is infectious cause most commonly the infection which are causing the pancreatitis is mumps and the cytomegalovirus infections then we have our another causes which is alcohol in alcohol a uh, metabolic cause which are you know causing the disturbance in the metabolism of our body so first is the alcohol when the calcium levels are so much high hypercalcemia then the triglycerides levels are so much high it can also lead to the acute pancreatitis and friend this is the list of those drugs which can cause when the patient is on having because of the other underlying condition and the patient is taking one of these drugs or the combination of that it can also cause the pancreas to get inflamed and presents with the symptoms of acute pancreatitis so drugs which are the drugs see there are drugs which are causing the definitely which are acting as the definitive cause of causing the pancreatitis or the probable cause of the pancreatitis see there are a lot of many drugs but actually this the list of these drugs we need to learn by heart because the questions has been asked in many of our exams that which which of the following drug uh, they would give you four drugs and which they would ask which of the following drug is not the reason to, uh, for the probable cause of the acute pancreatitis and they will give you like this and this and this and from here one of the question, uh, one of the drug is there so the drugs which are causing the which are the definitive cause are six mercaptopurin azathioprine didioxinosin tetracycline cortrimoxazole thiazide estrogens antidepressants pentamidine 5 amino salicylic acid these are the most common which we really need to know by the heart regarding the pancreatic etiology if we go for the probable causes probable causes which are causing this pancreatitis we have an aspartinase fenformin procainamide isoniazid alpha methyl dopa and acetaminophen so till now we have understood any injury any acute injury to the pancreas giving us the manifestation of pancreatitis the organ will get inflamed okay most common cause gallstones another most common second most common cause alcohol but alcohol acting as the most common cause for chronic pancreatitis but for acute pancreatitis gallstones we have like a procedure has been performed by the doctor and uh, any acute injury has been done unfortunately it is a atrogenic cause right like, while doing the ERCP then another way have metabolic causes alcohol I have already told you high when the calcium levels are very much high then when the triglycerides levels are very much high then drugs the list of the drugs we really need to keep in mind definitive causes probable causes okay and uh, if there occurs you know the pancreatitis in the children the most common cause always is the blood trauma okay because sometimes uh, nowadays the most of our exams are uh, asking you know the clinical based questions and scenarios but s- still one liners are still there in the uh, examinations if they ask the most common cause of pancreatitis in the children uh, it is blood trauma in the acute cases then we will uh, know about the clinical features how the patient will be present to a doctor okay we will see the clinical case scenario also but just look at about uh, know about this pancreatitis first okay so clinical features are epigastric pain which is radiating to the back the patient would patient would always come and say i have i am having the pain in this area epigastric pain which is radiating to the back it is going uh, uh, radiate radiates towards the back of the patient nausea and vomiting see friends the symptomatology and the clinical presentation i have already told you many times that it may be similar with other conditions also see epigastric pain radiating to the back and that means basically it is a abdominal pain and abdominal pain we can see in a lot a lot a lot of many other manifestations uh, manifestations of the diseases so we need to take the history really uh, properly and we will go this pain but the characteristic is this pain is worse when lying down when the patient says i am uh, i am lying down on the bed 
this pain will get worse and he kept on trying the positions he kept on trying to changing the positions so as to he will get a or she will get the relief from the pain so what is the work up for this uh, patient we need to do see i have told you about your pancreatitis how the injury can happen how it can occur to a patient patient then uh, just suppose you you are an intern and on the emergency duty you have got a, <coughs> a patient who who came to us with just for the epigastric pain and he said that after three or four hours back i had the episodes of vomiting and now now presently i am feeling nauseous so what is the work up which has been done by a doctor work up is just uh, uh, go Go look for the CBC, CBC, ultrasound of abdomen, ECG, serum amylase, serum lipase, and LFT. The basic tests which a doctor has to order for to look at you know, all of the things and to see where the problem has occurred. Okay, I will tell you why I have ordered ECG. The patient has been came for this epigastric pain. I will tell you uh, this serum amylase. See in the pancreatitis when we are diagnosing pancreatitis. the serum amylase is the most sensitive when the levels of the serum amylase levels of the serum amylase is four times four times than the normal than the normal it is somewhere suggesting that the patient is having acute pancreatitis along with the symptom symptomatology and the history which has been given by the patient then the serum like this Serum lipase is more specific. Since guys, in pancreatitis, okay, serum amylase is uh, increased four times the values rather than uh, than the normal. But serum uh, serum amylase must uh, serum amylase can be increased in other conditions too. There are many other conditions, uh, you know, which are commonly present in the uh, emergency department where the serum amylase must be high. So. whenever you get a serum amylase high it is not definitely it is saying that it is the patient it has come for this acute pancreatitis then we go for the serum lipase serum lipase which is more specific yeah whenever the uh, the, uh, the values of the serum lipase are increased we say yeah we have the pancreatitis but still serum amylase on the basis of this serum lipase and serum amylase we can you know say the patient is having acute pancreatitis we have to go for uh, another clinical patterns clinical physiology and examination of the patient then we will go for the liver function test these tests have been ordered just to see whether what is going on what is going on inside the body what is going on inside the heart uh, inside the body duct and hormones all the things what the patient has come to us with a epigastric pain and all how it has been started okay so till now you understand how, what is the work up or approach of a doctor at least CBC, USG, ECG, a serum amylase, serum lipase, liver function test. So okay. So after the patient has come and epigastric pain, okay, you have given some of the painkiller just to get the uh, just to give the relief to the patient, and you know you have the time to get all those tests, CBC, LFT, and uh, this type of kind of stuff to look for the for the studies. But the thing is, whenever we need to diagnose the pancreatitis, CBC is really required. so see see uh, we always often do it when 3 to 4 days after the patient has got the first attack okay first attack is of this pain which is showing the symptomatology of radiating to the back and the vomit 3 to 4 days after the attack we would go for the ccd it is the best scoring system best scoring system in finding about the acute pancreatitis and we say this is pult has a scoring system and we also call it ct severity index so ccct is the best scored system uh, severity index ct severity index best scoring system and pult has a score or ct severity index we do call it so what does it shows so whenever we get the contrast enhanced ct scan we have to look for two things in the basically when we are looking for the pancreatitis first is the appearance appearance of the gland in the uh, ct and another is the amount of necrosis spread okay amount of necrosis spread how much the tissue has been necrosed in the ct so first whenever you see there is an appearance in the ct you see the appearance normal normal appearance of the pancreas it is just considering zero point okay 
a much more longer you know i would give you much more longer uh, notes and knowledge and all but just we this is basically a clinical diagnosis we can't you know theoretically make it to happen slowly and steadily we will understand why we will start to do the internship and we will see the patients while in the our mbbs course only we will start to understand it so the severity score while finding the severity score the most important diagnostic criteria or severity score is ramson's criteria to diagnose acute pancreatitis test scoring system cct balthazar score then another uh, criteria we have is glasgow criteria glasgow criteria Uh, yeah in ransons criteria sorry if more than equal to three parameters are positive we always say the patient is having acute severe pancreatitis pancreatitis then the glasgow criteria <clears throat> in the glasgow criteria you just need to know the name not all the parameters because most of the parameters has been covered up in the <coughs> ransons criteria itself so basically we always look for the ransons criteria Glasgow criteria. If the criteria is more than equal to three, it is also suggesting acute severe pancreatitis. Another is the Apache Apache scoring. Acute physiology and chronic health education, a uh, chronic health evaluation score. If it is more than eight, equal to eight, it is acute severe pancreatitis. What happens in this score? Like we take twelve variables, physiological variables. We have twelve physiological variables. Physiological. logical variables we look for and if more than equal to eight variables are positive we we will also this is also suggesting that the patient is having acute pancreatitis another uh, nowadays we look for the apache o criteria too apache o means okay these twelve variables are uh, evaluated and now another is the person who has come for this evaluation is obese apache criteria plus the obesity is present in the patient it is not exactly a good indicator or prognostic factor okay so obesity along with the apache criteria it comes positive it is a poor prognosis of the acute pancreatitis another criteria which has been used is biceps criteria it is bedside index for severity and acute pancreatitis bedside index for severity of acute pancreatitis Why bad side? Because the patient is so severely ill, and we, you know, calculate or evaluate all those parameters, which is blood urea nitrogen, which must be more than twenty-five milligram of deciliters, or impaired mental status. Sometimes, because of this exocrine secretion and all, uh, in acute pancreatitis patient, the patient is so much confused and mentally altered. He doesn't know what he is talking about, or what, uh, or if he knows what he is talking about, but we are not getting. what is trying to say the slurred speech also impaired mental status third is sirs systemic inflammatory response syndrome because of this you know pancreatitis see this is a condition where severity can also happen then the acute pancreatitis has become you know very severely symptomatic symptomatic and a lot of things is going on we have systemic inflammatory response syndrome in the body we have uh, the inflammation of severe organs uh, inflammation of the other organs too okay and uh, by that from a age is more than 60 and from p pleural effusion has been occurred in the patient or not if this criteria also three or more than equal to three then also suggesting uh, acute severe pancreatitis along with that we look for the c reactive protein level which must be more than 150 international units per liter and prolactinoma the presence of any uh, cancer like prolactinoma then another what is the pathophys if i tell you the pathophysiology of the acute pancreatitis what happens that in the pancreas we have acinus okay in the acinus they have started intra acinus trypsinogen activation okay the trypsinogen one of the pancreatic secretions you know the most of the exocrine secretions of the pancreas it, it is in the thymogen form in active form it will get activated whenever it is required in the presence of another stimulus so in the pancreas the pathophysiology part covers like the pancreas have the acinus cells the acinus cell cells starts to uh, increase the levels of the trypsinogen whenever the levels of the trypsinogen has been increased in the acinus cells of the pancreas we have the inflammatory response in the body now 
the inflammatory response in the body has been come whenever we have the inflammatory response in the body because of any stress con- stress condition anything which has disturbing uh, the natural physiology of that particular organ we have the secretion of the interleukins most predominantly is And due to the uh, pancreatitis, start to increase in the proliferation of trypsinogen. In the, the, if then the trypsinogen levels are increased, we have inflammation in the body. Whenever we have inc- inflammation in the body, we have as the compensation compensatory mechanism, we release certain cytokines from our immune cells, which are interleukin six and interleukin eleven. Because of this inflammatory response and uh, these interleukins release, we see symptoms in the patient. We see. Symptoms in the patient, understandable. So these were uh, the criteria which is telling the doctor about the severity of the pancreatitis. How much the severity is? Okay, Ramsey's criteria, Glasgow criteria, Apache, Apache O, by that CRP level and about the catalytic level. Now we will go for the complications. See, guys, uh, we know we have an inflammation of the pancreatitis. So what can be the complications if the course has been prolonged? See, lo- we have local complication and systemic complication. Okay, the local local complication are acute pancreatic fluid collection, acute pancreatic necrotic collection, and fibrosis. What happens in the pancreatitis? The fluid start to accumulate. The, in, within the first four weeks, the fluid start to accumulate around the pancreas. Whenever we say the fluid start to accumulate around the pancreas, it is one of the complication which is acute pancreatic fluid collection. It happens within the four weeks. The another complication is acute pancreatic necrotic collection. This fluid okay has been uh, collected around it, so the tissue would get fibrosed and necrotic. Then the necrosis start to happen in the pancreas around the pancreas. Then the necrosis start to happen. Then we say acute pancreatic necrotic collection or the pseudocyst. So about the pseudocyst, it is really important. So I will tell you about complications in the chronic pancreatitis. In the chronic pancreatitis, the pseudocyst is more common, although it can be seen in acute pancreatitis too, but it is more common in the chronic. Then another local complication is pseudo aneurysm, portal systemic vein thrombosis, which is causing the left side portal hypertension. Another is left sided palliable effusion. If we talk about the systemic complications, what the other organs are being affecting, where the whatever the changes are happening in the blood system, it is most commonly is a hypovolemic shock. Most common systemic complication of the acute pancreatitis: hypovolemic shock, hyperglycemia, ARDS, acute respiratory distress syndrome, hypocalcemia. See, mind it, guys. I always told you whenever I told you about the causes of the acute pancreatitis, one of the metabolic cause was hypercalcemia, but the complication is hypocalcemia. We see for the Ransom's criteria after 48 hours of admission, hypocalcemia less than 8, acute tubular necrosis and chronic heart failure cancer. Okay. Ah, guys, sometimes the patient presents with so much of the severe pancreatitis, we see three signs while doing the physical examination. It is a Cullen sign, Gray Turner sign and Fox sign. Cullen sign is what discoloration occurs. Discoloration, discoloration around Umbilicus, umbilicus, achemosis, actually achemosis bruising, a bruising kind, but, but it's not achemosis and bruising, are, although a bit different, but bruising kind of stuff occurring uh, around the pancreas, it is cool inside. Another is great and fine, the same discoloration if it is happening in the flank region of the patient. If we examine the, uh, if we do the abdominal examination of the patient, we will see any discoloration, it is in, uh, near, around the flank region or near the flank region, so it is great in the sign. Then another we have it is the Fox sign. Again, it is one of the discoloration, which is in venal region. In venal region, discoloration my main to say is about the blood only. Okay, so but it is seen in the severe pancreatitis, which is hemorrhagic type, hemorrhagic type of pancreatitis. I have told you, pancreatitis can be acute and chronic. Acute is more, more common than the chronic forms because it takes a lot of time to get you know converted to the chronic form. Another, if we see the types also, uh, it is very severe type is hemorrhagic type. 
where we can find the free signs. Whenever we find the free signs, we will just start the treatment for this uh, hemorrhagic pancreatitis by keeping uh, by looking at the vitals of the patient and other conditions and other evaluations. So, about a differential diagnosis, okay. I will tell you about a differential diagnosis first. I tell you about the management. Now, this is the basic fundamentals of the principles we have studied about the pancreatitis. Now, the management, how we look go for the management, we have in whenever a patient of acute pancreatitis is there, nothing much more uh, things has been done, uh, has been seen and, and other manifestations are not there. Only the acute pancreatitis manifestation, we go for the sportive treatment, which is fluid resuscitation. Aggressively, we need to give, give the person the fluid. I have told you, in acute pancreatitis, most of the time the patient has dehydration, which has not been, you know, seen as a characteristic symptom. Nutrition. Nutrition we have to give uh, as soon as possible. Nutrition in the form of total parenteral nutrition. Okay? Total parenteral nutrition because uh, when there is acute pancreatitis or it is, you know, has not been given us any of the complications still yet. As soon as we start this giving the nutrition, total parenteral nutrition, the mortality of this pancreatitis will be so much less. Then we have uh, one more thing which is of octreotide. And the symptomatic treatment can be done, by, uh, done like the vomiting in the nausea according to the severity. Yeah. About the differential diagnosis, now how much we have read about this acute pancreatitis? We will see a clinical case scenario. Then we will sum up this. Okay. Just just now start to imagine being as a doctor. You understand the basic principles of the acute pancreatitis, what basically happens in the acute pancreatitis. But whenever a patient comes to you uh, in the emergency department, you are not, you know, gonna mark it always, you're gonna look for the pancreatitis. You are gonna see the other conditions. You are start to ruling out the other conditions too, where the symptomatology is similar. Like 43 year old man. Uh, comes to the emergency department with his daughter and complains of subcostal upper abdominal pain. Subcostal upper abdominal pain, which is telling us about the epigastric pain. Okay, focused, uh, which is uh, he is saying that focused on the midline area. In the midline area, upper abdominal pain and radiates to the back. He uh, started four hours ago and uh, he had the episode of vomiting actually, which has uh, this pain has started four hours ago and had two episodes of vomiting which is non-bloody presently he is saying that i am feeling nauseous and uh, or the doctor which has accompanied the patient is saying that uh, my father you know uh, he is while giving the history to the doctor he is saying that she is saying that uh, he has been complaining for the four hours that i am having the pain which is going to the back and uh, he has also uh, did the vomiting which which was two episodes and, and and we noticed there was no blood in the vomiting pain getting worse by lying flat and she said whenever i uh, tell him to uh, lie down and the pain would get worse in the patient said consumed vodka last night so see the, there is a history of alcoholism also Both. that person also took the history in the history while taking the history the doctor has been taking here and the doc doctor said Mild hypertension is there to my father and he has been on the drugs. Okay. Then the bubble movements are fine. Mildly decrease. Normal rhythm. Lungs are clean on auscultation. This, this thing we have done the physical examination. In the physical examination, we have to look for the other things too. The skull and sign, cough sign, a lot of these things. So basically, what this person is saying, being a doctor, just look for it. Patient came to you, he has abdominal pain on the midline, subcostal. Basically, suggesting epigastric pain. And the patient is saying it is going radiating to the back, and it has been only four hours. It has been four hours that I am feeling like that. And I did the vomit, I had the episode of the vomiting, which is non bloody. Blood was not found in the vomiting. And uh, he said, while giving the history, I took the alcohol also last night. So, see. I won't say you would go for this one. Now, what is your workup? What a doctor must do? What a doctor must do when a patient comes to us? Okay, first thing we know, we do the physical examination. Physical examination. Examination along with the history. Along with the 
हिस्ट्री ऑफ द पेशेंट सी गाइड मैनी टाइम्स आई टोल्ड यू अबाउट द हिस्ट्री इन मेडिसिन द हिस्ट्री सो मच ऑफ इम्पॉर्टेंस लेट सेवेंटी परसेंट ऑफ द केस हैज बिन सॉल्व बाई टेकिंग द हिस्ट्री ओनली ओके सो वी वट इज माई अप्रोच बींग ए डॉक्टर वट इज वट मस्ट बी योर अप्रोच इज अ फिजिकल एग्जामिनेशन ए कम्प्लीट फिजिकल एग्जामिनेशन अलॉन्ग विद द हिस्ट्री यू मस्ट टेक एंड अदर शॉप ओके यू मस्ट कॉल फॉर द सी बी सी लीवर लीवर फंक्शन टेस्ट एंड कॉल फॉर द अल्ट्रासाउंड ऑफ द डॉमन ई सी जी फिर माइलेज लाइक एस लीवर फंक्शन टेस्ट ओके इन द पेंटेटाइटिस आई कैन सजेस्ट यू अंडरस्टूड दिस दिस कैन बी गोन बी पॉजिटिव ओके बट वाई आई सजेस्टेड हेयर द ई सी जी सी बिकॉज वन ऑफ द डिफरेंशियल डायग्नोसिस of this pain epigastric pain can be this epigastric pain the patient is not able to define to the doctor it is basically epigastric or something else it may be the chest pain also which is giving a uh, minor attack of myocardial infarction cardiovascular so i have ordered the ecg just because to rule out any cardiovascular cause of this pain to rule out myocardial infarction uh, or the any other cardiovascular anomaly if the patient is having so in the differential diagnosis now how we should start to differentiate whenever this kind of patient would come we would start to think about a lot many diseases okay like cholecystitis inflammation of the gallbladder okay it must be it must be there because when if the gallstones are there it is causing the pancreatitis okay it must be there but in cholecystitis which is due to non uh, which is non pancreatic with the, when the uh, acute pancreatitis presentation is there but it is not the pancreatitis uh, here we can it is upper right quadrant pain in cholecystitis and murphy sign is present murphy sign is positive which is basically showing the upper right quadrant pain another about this pain peptic ulcer disease but peptic ulcer disease also comes and shows uh, with us some reflex syndrome reflux things and we may find while taking the history the melina melina in the stools but the patient has had nothing gastroesophageal reflux disease it is also reflux reflux and patient would complain of heartburns also if the patient has not complained the heartburns small bowel obstruction may be there so in the uh, while examining her bowel sounds were uh, normal fine mildly decreased and bowel, small bowel wall obstructions small bowel obstruction always presents with malabsorption also malabsorption also but no history of diarrhea or the patient is having acute myocardial infarction i told you to rule out i have ordered the ecg to rule out if there is this is due this pain is due to whether it is myocardial infarction or not in the ecg in the myocardial infarction we get st elevation or depression st elevation or depression ruptured ruptured aortic aneurysm can be the differential diagnosis but the doctor can do why uh, but ruptured aortic aneurysm is so much of the emergency condition emergency it is acute emergency very fastly we need to act and the patient is saying that it's been 4 hours that the pain has started so it, it might not be chronic pancreatitis yes it can be the chronic pancreatitis but uh, but we need to look out it chronic pancreatitis is the person okay last night he has taken the uh, alcohol okay but for chronic pancreatitis to get developed it must be chronic uh, binge drinker from long okay but we also uh, need to order other tests also to ruling out these diseases and uh, acute ascending cholangitis in acute ascending cholangitis we also see the pain but the thing is acute ascending cholangitis is basically accompanied by the fever jaundice and uh, the right upper quadrant pain okay right upper quadrant pain is there but fever is it must be present in acute cholangitis the pancreatic patient is not to have present with the fever and the boerhoff syndrome boerhoff syndrome it is due to the sudden vomiting boerhoff syndrome is what we have a tear in our esophagus we have a tear in our esophagus which is due to increased barometric pressure induced barometric pressure barometric pressure and how the barometric pressure has been increased it is by vomiting vomit what happens that the uh, the person is having uh, alcohol look okay? and you know he has done some binge drinking from since morning and he has started that drinking and having 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 fastly the drink and the patient present with the vomiting the the barometric pressure was so increased inside in the esophagus that it uh, leads to give the vomiting and while vomiting the 
here occurs in the walls of the uh, inside the cosel of the esophagus which can be dangerous which can come dangerous to okay so we will see the blood also sometimes so in this manner we will start to ruling out the other differentials of this disease the other differentials of this disease the patient has come up abdominal pain 4 hours non bloody vomiting what we start what we start to keep on thinking these medicine topics are the main need to rely upon the clinical diagnosis so that is why i am telling you the history must be so much of importance because you have to come and you have to at the end of the day you have to treat the patient properly right so to come up into the diagnosis we have to be so much practically strong this practically strong knowledge you are going to apply on the practical basis and you will learn it over the years as we see the patients uh, in the shift time junior residency time as the experience so in this question the pick up point was subcostal pain uh, subcostal upper abdominal pain radiating radiating to the back okay radiating to the back uh, in other diseases also we have uh, the pain which is radiating to the back okay in ascending cholangitis the pain goes uh, till the scapula and other another disease also but like that only we have good amount of knowledge uh, practical knowledge which we can apply on the practical basis and inspiring minds have put in so much so much of the efforts to make their doctors good in practical as well as the practical knowledge that i think you must put some time and focus now you read about this topic acute pancreatitis and try to solve some clinical scenarios clinical cases if i would like to give a lot of knowledge lot of knowledge but just you know getting up the knowledge from the different sources is not the intelligent work to do by a doctor we need to look at the basics of all the diseases see the clinical cases how the patient has been uh, presenting to the doctor and we will understand it okay so best of luck we will see you in the next videos